Stepping down and handing power to his son, Qatar's ruler puts a new generation in charge of the country's vast energy wealth and rising political influence. But what message is the Emirates sending to the region and the wider world? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Rida Fakhri. It is a rare transition of power, a reigning emir voluntarily giving way to a new generation. Qatar's Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani is stepping aside after 18 years in charge to be replaced by his son Sheikh Tamim. The 33-year-old will now take the helm of the tiny nation whose oil and gas wealth has altered the course of events across the Middle East and projected Qatar onto the international stage. James Bayes reports on a historic day. It's a transition almost unheard of in the modern Arab world, a ruler announcing he's giving up power voluntarily. As I address you today, I declare that I will hand over the reins of power to Sheikh Tamim, and I'm fully certain that he is up to the responsibility, deserving your confidence, capable of shouldering the responsibility and fulfilling the mission. It was an end to 18 years at the helm, a reign that started at a time of his own choosing. Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani was the Crown Prince and Minister of Defence in 1995 when he took over in a bloodless coup while his father was on an overseas trip. He said he needed to take hold of the reins in order to use Qatar's great wealth to modernise the small country, then a barren peninsula considered a backwater. In his first few years as Emir, Sheikh Hamad expanded the energy infrastructure, the source of the country's wealth. He also set about putting Qatar on the map. He abolished the country's Ministry of Information, helping to establish the Arab world's first satellite news channel, Al Jazeera. Next, a brand new global airline started from scratch. These were projects that brought prestige and influence. Slowly at first, Qatar and its emir became important players on the diplomatic stage. In the Middle East, a region where divisions are rife, the door was left open to all sides. Take the example of Sudan. Qatar maintained relations with President Omar al-Bashir's government, yet invited his rivals to Doha and staged peace talks. Instead of long drawn out process, Qatari diplomacy was marked by quick action. When briefly gun battles started raging in Beirut in 2008, the Emir sent his long-serving Prime Minister to the city and brought leaders from all parts of the political spectrum to Doha to draw up a new peace deal. When villages in southern Lebanon were destroyed by Israeli bombardment, Qatar stepped in to rebuild them. In the last year, a visit too to Gaza and another pledge of investment and reconstruction. Following the start of the Arab Spring, Qatar has played a pivotal role around the table of the Arab League. Increasingly involved in the complex decision-making which led to Qatari support for the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi in Libya and now backing for the opposition in Syria has been Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. Now the new Emir, Sheikh Tamim, has been greeting prominent members of Qatari society. Beside him, his father, who at this time of tension and change in the Arab world, made a plea for unity. As I am confident that you are fully aware of your loyalty and your Arab and Muslim identity, I urge you to preserve our civilized traditional and cultural values originating from our religion, Arab identity, and above all, our humanity, as we believe that the Arab world is one human body, its strength in that combination of all its individual parts. 